Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. I thought I'd take a bit of time out of this beautiful day today to bring you a review of the Lenovo P2. So in the past I've always um, advocated for buying used smartphones. They come in cheaper and you get pretty good performance for the price. But if you are willing to spend a little bit more to get a new handset, what can you expect? Well let me tell you, excellent battery life. So by this point I've been using the phone for a little under a week now and you know what I've only charged it once. It lasted me through Friday afternoon starting at 4 o'clock to Tuesday night before I went to sleep. That is over 100 hours and I've been streaming hours worth of YouTube, updating the operating system, downloading what felt like hundreds of apps, playing games and taking phone calls and all kinds of things. I wouldn't say that it was super heavy use uh, but I'd say it'd be at least mid-range use. I mean, you don't do these kind of things every day. It is amazing. It has been, how I say, a revolution for me. The phone's 5,000 milliamp battery, coupled with a capable battery bank, can last me one entire week without having to plug into a wall. That is pretty cool because what I do is I take these two to tape with me when I go and study every week. I charge them there and never pay for the electricity on my phone. A little bit sneaky I suppose, but it's what you can do with a phone like this. As you already know, this phone was one of the only phones I could find with at least a 1080p panel on it that could also shoot 4K video and 5000 milliamps plus. But that's not the only thing it's got going for it. It's got a healthy dose of 4GB worth of RAM as well as running on a 14 nanometer Snapdragon 625 SoC. This makes it very efficient and long-lasting, as you can imagine. It may only be the mid-range chip, but it's a mid-range phone anyway. And the thing with it being a lower clocks chip compared to a, um, the other 14 nanometer version is that it actually um, uses less power. During my uh, use of it, I never really saw it slow down or anything. I thought it was excellent in performance. The only real place that you're going to see a difference will be in benchmark numbers, I would say. You can shoot pictures up to 13 megapixels and it also has an f2.0 aperture. This is pretty bright. It's not the brightest out there but it's certainly not a slouch by any means. Unfortunately it's missing optical image stabilization which is like almost the reason why I didn't buy it but uh, there's no other phone out there like this anyway. But now that I have it um, I'm not even that annoyed by it actually. It's got dual sim or sim card and SD card slot functionality as well as the main configuration being 64 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of RAM. But there is also a 32 and uh, 3 slash 4 gigabyte version, just so you know. The micro SD card is expandable up to 256 gigabytes. So if you're hoping to expand up to two terabytes, which is available on some models, then you'll have to look elsewhere. It supports NFC as well as dual band uh, wireless AC. And it has a fingerprint reader right here on the home button. Yep, there's a physical button and you can actually control the phone quite easily with just that. But more on that later. The only other downside I can see to this phone is the fact that you can't shoot at 1080p and 60 FPS, which doesn't really make sense to a person like me. If a phone can shoot 4K 30, then that means it should be able to have enough bandwidth for 1080 120. So 1080 60 is pretty easy, I would assume. Anyway, enough chatting. I'll take you on a physical tour of the device. So it comes in champagne gold and graphite grey. It seems like the champagne gold version is cheaper, so that's the one that I went for. But in reality, I actually really like the colour and I think maybe it's even better than the uh, grey version. It has the speaker, selfie cam and sensors up the top as per usual. Down the bottom here it has the capacitive home button which is quite handy. Just below it we have the charging port in the center as well as what looks like two speakers. In actual fact there's only one speaker in here but anyway you can give it points for looking good I suppose. At the top we have a headphone jack which is always a good thing to see. Hate it when they take those off the devices. On the side we have the lock button and the volume rocker and on the other side we have the physical hardware switch for the ultra power saving mode. So far I haven't even needed to use it but if you are someone who is really actually off the grid you might find it kind of handy. It's a little bit lame that you can't program it for anything else like for example switching between front facing camera and main camera or for booting up an app or closing an app or any number of things that you could want to do with it. You'll see on the front that it's a 5.5 inch phone but it's long enough to actually have enough space for the fancy new 18 by 9 aspect ratio so I reckon that in future iterations of this phone they should actually make the phone have slightly higher resolution not that the screens a bad thing 
On the back, you can see the Lenovo logo and also the NFC tag, the flash and the camera. It's a pretty simple design made of aluminium and it's very good. Even though it was released in late 2016, it's still a good option for a lot of people, I think, especially because it starts with Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow and is upgraded to 7.0.0 Nougat. What else can I say other than this is what the selfie cam looks like and this is what the main camera looks like. Yeah, this is just 4K footage. As you can see, you can zoom in quite a bit and look at... Well, why are you looking there? So much detail to look at. Anyway, let's take this into the field and see what the test photos look like. Inside lane, missing exits, include to the pavement. Between the lines, I'll keep my gate straight ahead. The last stop flies by No more waiting for the gun to fire No more walking through revolving doors I've gone around once and I don't need to go around anymore Break away, forget your sober case Stop dwelling on empty words Stop stalling in the doorway And cancel the cruise control Switch in the manual Don't you wanna feel right? right, right, right. As you can see, it ain't too bad, and it's relatively easy to recommend, especially at its approximately 300 Australian dollar price point. It's got a huge battery, an efficient processor, pretty good video and photo chops, as well as good storage space. It's just an all-round good phone. There's no one area that it really lacks in, and other than small quirks here and there, pretty much awesome. So would I recommend you pick it up? Well, simply yes, but if you need the absolute top end, mega performance from gaming and optical image stabilization as well as 108060 then maybe not but for the rest of this it's a thin phone especially considering the size of the battery and a very usable one so I said you could pretty much control the phone with this one button right here and you can use it to unlock the phone bring up recent apps bring up Google Assistant or press back it's pretty much all you need of course, you can always bring the controls back, but I prefer to just hide them. So it comes highly regarded from me. If you found this review helpful, then it would be helpful to me if you left a comment, liked, and subscribed. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.